In the beginning, before the existence of time, there was only chaos, the void and nothingness. Chaos was the beginning before the beginning, something yet nothing. And from this nothingness, the source of all life was born, the personification of the world, a mother of the titans, Gaia. Hello fellow learners and welcome back to Learnism, where we cover a range of topics from mythology to philosophy and more. Today's video will be about Gaia, who is probably either the mother, grandmother or great-grandmother of your favourite deities, if she isn't your favourite herself. If you do enjoy this video, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel and stay up to date with our content. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Gaia is the primordial goddess of Earth. As I mentioned in the intro, Gaia came from chaos. Chaos in this case actually refers to an entity, and that entity is the void and origin of everything. Chaos is gendered differently across different sources. Some refer to chaos as female, others as male or genderless. Primordial deities are the first generation of gods, and they are the fundamental forces and basic components of the universe. Gaia was the first of these primordial deities to emerge from chaos. After coming into existence, Gaia was shortly followed by her fellow primordials. Tartarus, this is where the damned are punished. Eros, which is love. Erebus, darkness. And Nyx, the night. I've covered Nyx in a separate video and touched briefly on Erebus as that was Nyx's husband. So make sure to check it out if you're interested in learning more. Unlike the Olympians and the divine entities that succeeded them, the primordials were not often given human characteristics. Gaia literally is Earth, and not just a representation of it. In fact, her name means Earth too, in Greek. Of course, this is hard to understand as she still interacts and behaves in a way that seems human-like within the myths, so we will speak about her as such. There is a modern theory called the Gaia Hypothesis, which argues that the Earth is a living system that uses similar mechanisms as living organisms to stay alive. This includes features like temperature regulation as well as other things. However, the ancient Greeks held onto this belief even before contemporary scholars. Gaia, as a primordial deity, was essentially Earth as a living and functioning organism. This may somewhat explain the myths in which a primordial force or element exercises some form of will, which wouldn't make sense for just an inanimate giant rock. Gaia is described as the giver of dreams and nourisher of young children. From this we can see the maternal characteristics frequently associated with the deity. Her Roman counterpart is Terra Mater, which translates to Mother Earth. Gaia had the unique ability to reproduce on her own without a partner. This is how she formed her first few offspring, the most notable being Uranus, the grandfather of Zeus. As suggested in the title and thumbnail of this video, Gaia is considered to be the mother of life in ancient Greek mythology. Her first children were created by herself without a partner. These children can be considered the important deities that shape the state of the world. The three children are Uranus, who was the sky, Aurea, the mountains, and Pontus, the sea. Uranus is the most notable of the new deities as he was said to be created in order to be equal to Gaia, even though they were opposite, sky and earth. Gaia and Uranus would go on to reproduce together, resulting in the creation of the famous Titans, who many of us are familiar with. Gaia and Uranus's youngest child would be Kronos, the god of time, who would eventually become the king of Titans and father to the Olympian ruler, Zeus. Kronos was said to be the most terrible of Gaia's children, as he was a power-hungry deity that was eager to do anything to retain his supremacy. Alongside the Titans, Gaia and Uranus produced the Cyclops, the three one-eyed beings usually found in myths. They were said to create the lightning bolts for Zeus, which he used to wage war against the Titans. There were also the three Hecatontries, who had 100 arms and 50 heads each. Uranus hated the Hecatontries and the Cyclops, so much so that at birth he hid them within their mother, Gaia, causing her great pain in the process. This would ultimately be the spark for a rebellion against Uranus by Gaia and Kronos, one of the three great rebellions that Gaia would create against her children and descendants. 
Although Gaia is often associated with being caring, just like nature, she can be ruthless, with her children being no exception to her wrath. And there are three great rebellions that Gaia is known to have incited against her children. The first was her plot against Uranus, then the war against Titans, and finally the war against the Olympian gods. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Uranus's treatment of the Cyclops and Hecatontries created by him and Gaia was a spark of the plot against him. In order to defeat him, Gaia gathered her children, the Titans, and asked for their help to fight against their father Uranus. Only Kronos steps forward. As a result, him and Gaia decided to go forward with the rebellion. Gaia gave Kronos a jagged sickle, his primary weapon, and waited for night to reach when Uranus would try to be with her. Kronos then proceeded to ambush his father, castrating him, ultimately leading to the fall of Uranus. The blood that came from Uranus impregnated Gaia, creating the nymphs and giants. The giants will play a huge role in Gaia's final rebellion, which would be against the Olympian gods. So this marks the end of this video, however I'll be doing a separate video that focuses more closely on the rebellion against the different Greek deities by Gaia and other entities. Make sure to comment down below if this would be of interest to you. Thank you all for watching and supporting the channel as usual. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and it's been a pleasure to learn with you.